A butterfly swing in Amazon forests would trigger a tornado in Texas. The butterfly effect leads Oxford professor Ian Golding to write a book called The Butterfly Defect in 2014. He warned that globalization in a hyper-connected world is vulnerable to global emergencies. Do you think uh, that today's coronavirus is one of the systematic risks you have explained in The Butterfly Defect? Yes, it, it is exactly a systemic risk. I identified that in uh, the book in 2014. Uh, the super spreaders of the goods of globalization, like uh, rapidly growing cities next to airport hubs, uh, are also the super spreaders of the bads, like a pandemic, just in the same way as financial centers can spread financial crises, uh, that internet systems can spread uh, cyber viruses. We see that uh, pandemics get spread by the same things, the arteries, the, the, the blood flow of globalization uh, spreads good things and it also spreads diseases. As we have seen the downside of the globalization, but do you think after the pandemic, the globalization will be reversed? No, I don't think globalization will be reversed. For me, globalization means the flows across national borders of uh, things, of manufactured trade, of finance, of ideas, of people. And I don't see that uh, stopping. However, the nature of globalization is going to change, has been changing, and the pandemic accelerates that change. One change is the center of gravity is moving and will move more rapidly to Asia and particularly towards China, South Korea, Hong Kong, which have managed the pandemic more quickly, more effectively, and the economies will recover more quickly. And that means that the trade and globalization will be more centered first on Asia. That was happening. This will accelerate it. I think it also will accelerate the reshoring of some manufactured trade, uh, this was happening anyway. Uh, robotics, automation, uh, 3D printing are encouraging production to come home because it's capital intensive, not labor intensive. And also customers want quick delivery. And it's very difficult to do quick delivery from a very far away production. Will this trend a good news for the developing countries? No, I'm very worried about developing countries. Uh, I think the pandemic will have a devastating impact on countries with weak health systems uh, and a weak uh, economic management and very little reserves. So I think Africa will be devastated uh, by the pandemic and poor countries in Asia and Latin America also will be. And then in the medium term, I'm worried about the job prospects. Uh, for developing countries because the model of the Asian tigers or the flying geese was always to do a lot of labor intensive jobs for manufacturing as export industries. That was the model that has been very successful in Asia. But if those jobs are now going to be done by machines, that is no longer a possibility for African countries. So they will have to rely on the old ways of getting money, tra travel and tourism, raw materials, exports. Uh, what kind of lessons could we draw from this pandemic? I think the lesson is that humanity and all of us in our economies are only as strong as the weakest link uh, that joins us all. We like an electronic or a digital system. If one piece goes wrong, the whole system goes wrong. And we need to ensure as humanity, as countries, that we uh, work more closely together going forward. How do you look at China's efforts in fighting against uh, this uh, pandemic? And as you have mentioned, the G20's leadership, um, what do you expect China to play its role in the globalization? My own view at this stage with the US turning its back on the world is that Europe uh, and China together should play a much stronger coordinated role.
I think Europe understands the issues on climate change, on pandemics and others, that they require coordinated action, and they could be a, a good partner. And other members of the G20 as well.